This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolus and there is no antidote. So let's get right oh, really? into it. No, there isn't. Oh, see, well, I've been extreme couponing and I can get those anecdotes for almost free. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> It's true. I've been saving Ooh. so much money on shampoo and conditioner. I'm very proud of myself. I th see. This is why you tune in to Hack Five. Also, you should tune <laughs> in to, to Shannon's other show where you just did a fantastic net cat segment. I did. Yes, uh, Hack Tip. That's over at Hack5.org as well. If you haven't checked it out, I just finished a 10 episode series on net cat. Um, basically, just the 101s, uh, beginner level. I don't know, man. Got pretty it. advanced there at the end because you were able to tie in Zork, one of the coolest text adventure <laughs> video games. <laughs> that was. Into Cool. Net cat, so I love that. That was so fun. Yeah, so we go like port scan and banana.hack5.org. <laughs> Maybe we'll zork it up. I don't banana. know. <laughs> so what are we doing today? We are we are getting into more about electromagnetic radiation. Ooh, yeah, you spoke about that last stuff. week, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I know. We're gonna Ooh. inverse tachyon pulse and just send it right through the main deflector array. But first But first I hear we got something in the mail. Oh we got some goodies. I heard we did. We Is got, it true? Yes. We got Yay! a gift from a fan. So thank you, fan, Those for the gift. Those are so fun. Yep, 15501 something something hack5.org has it. It's on Hack Shop. Oh, OK. Here's this. Oh, it's a card. Oh, what a fantastic oh, card, too. It's a card that says this. It's, oh, how did I mess that up? <laughs> it says enclosed. A joystick, retro connector. Woo! Oh, Thanks. that's a joystick. Play your favorite games. And it's from a guy named Charles. And he says, Darren and the Hack 5 crew, pr please enjoy this little Blast from the Past, updated for 2014. You may not be able to, to dial up your favorite BBS at 1200 pod these days, but through the magic of emulators, oh. you can still play Choplifter. Oh my god, this is fantastic. <laughs> Look at this little microcontroller. Is that a Teensy? Yeah. That looks just I believe like it a is. Teensy. Uh -huh. Oh man, this is fantastic. Joystick and with it's Teensy. Like on a, that's a VGA. Is that a VGA board or uh -huh. is that for this? It looks Hang like... Hang on. Oh, that's okay. I see. So this cereal? is a serial adapter. Ah, that makes sense. In fact, it is the retro connector joystick adapter here. Cool. So that guy's going into the GPIO here. We've got a mini USB cable. Oh. Plug it into our computer, and now oh, this that's blast epic. from the past. Oh man, this is fantastic. I was actually just doing a bunch of reading on the um, what is it? Atari controller, the 7800, because wow. they had. It was like this, except it had like a dial pad at the bottom and stuff. Oh, that's brilliant. In fact, it's kind of like on your. Way. It's right there. Which one? Oh, there. this one. Right. Oh, see, I thought that was a Starbucks cup. No, it's an Atari. <laughs> Actually, here you've got right, uh, right there. See? Oh yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah oh. Atari. Ah, oh. you can just wear that on your shirt. Yeah, I'll just I'll just super Boom. glue it on there because I'm so good with super glue. There you go. Just bam. Super right snobs. Hello. Now you can play with the joystick. Da, 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 da. Uh, that might be a little awkward since it'd be on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we have to wait, wait, wait. For the next Act Five meetup, what we need is like a Bluetooth controller and then like um Can we make like it light mount. up? No, what I'm saying is like wear a white t shirt but then mount an L C D screen Ooh. behind it and then have like Mario Brothers going or something. Oh that'd be that's fantastic. Cool. Huh? Ooh, that'd huh? be fun. Play, play Mario on your shirt. I okay. like it. Okay, sorry, <laughs> getting off on a tangent. Thank you so much for the gift. This is fantastic. This I can't is awesome. wait to play. And uh, we can find out more about card. setting this up. See a demonstration video at mentalhygiene.com slash retcon. R E T C O N. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. <laughs> fantastic goodie goodies. All so, right, to on to today's episode. Yes, because electromagnetic radiation is radiating your soul and the universe, and it is emitting from anything and everything. Does because that mean we're going to die? No. Well, yes, eventually. <laughs> uh, from and eventually, radiation. every particle and and uh, whatever the smallest unit of measurement of matter will be equally displaced through the universe in all vertices and will be still forever and ever and ever until one particle, we'll call him Bob, is just sitting there, silent, and decides, you know what? I was born to break dance. Oh. It's gonna happen. And then the bang, big and bang happened. All over again. Right. That's Got just it. my belief. But anyway, <laughs> we've been talking about radio, and so we're gonna we get have. into a little bit more theory stuff because it's really fun. And yesterday, yesterday, last week we talked about spectrum. Um, I mean, we've talked about spectrum in terms 
of like radio frequencies. We know that like, mm -hmm. for instance, Wi-Fi is on 2.4 gigahertz and other fun stuff is on 900 megahertz and there's cool stuff over in 433 yeah. megahertz. I'm still having some troubles picking some of those up with my little teeny tiny antenna over here. Well, this is because this antenna is not made for certain frequencies. Like, ah. you, what were you listening to? You were on some uh, AM bands. 145.890.000. So th th this, megahertz. this is not made for 147 megahertz. Ah. We're gonna get into that because um, this is, while a nice conductor, it's not necessarily for that wavelength. Oh, um, I see. And so these frequencies, which we typically talk about as far as radio, you know, it also encompass other things. For example, microwaves and even visible light. I mean, we're really just, in fact, all of this, we're talking about light. We're talking about energy that is, you know, moving at different frequencies. And so... They're all wavelengths. Yes. And we sort. actually have an example here of our uh, electromagnetic wave. Yes, and there's a lot of ways that we can actually define our wave here. And so the first thing that we can do is actually see how many cycles of oscillation there are uh, per second. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, okay, so a cycle in this instance would be, say, you know, fr right through here. I'll draw a box around our cycle. So the peak of one and the valley of another. So there we go. Well, it, it's in fact, it's actually, it's actually two peaks. It really just depends on the way that you're looking oh, at the face. Yeah. But essentially, this right here is a cycle. Okay. okay. And we can actually measure in the course of one second how many cycles we can observe. And so what we've illustrated right here, and there's a, a big dot, dot, dot here because this is just going to illustrate that over time, and this is time, we're gonna say that this right here is one second. So here we go, we've got one second. Okay. And we're actually going to say that we can see in this example, 100 million cycles. Wow. Now, obviously, uh, let's see, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, 100 million! <laughs> because we're just going to illustrate that right there. Um, and though we haven't drawn them all, we can actually say that in this case, what we have is a frequency of this wave, and that frequency would be 100 megahertz, whereas oh. a hertz is one cycle per second. Uh -huh. So like one, one, Ow. One, Ow. see, a hurt is one Ow. cycle every second. Ow, you hurt me. Yes, <laughs> ah, and there's also an awesome man, and we'll get into that later. But um, a megahertz, you ready for a megahertz? <laughs> that, that would be, be a million, oh, no. a million cycles per second. You just stay over there. <laughs> I know, right? So your megahertz. So this right here is going to be an example of 100 million cycles per second. Okay. And we can also measure the length of our wave from one peak to the next peak, and we can measure that in meters, you know, uh, kilometers or kilometers, uh, millimeters, centimeters, you know, oh. the metric system. Okay. So hooray for SI, and we're just going to go ahead and say that from this peak right here to this peak right here, that right there is going to be equal to, I'm going to put a tilde, three, I can't write sideways, <laughs> three meters. It's actually... So if I could physically see this in the world around me, mm -hmm. I could see this this wavelength right here would be woo, really took, big. Yeah, so three, it would take oh, three meters. It would take almost long. the length of this table here for it to go up, down, and back up again. Okay, right? got it. And um, in that case, it's actually for our example. We're not going to use. I put a tilde there because it's not actually three. It's actually two. My pen is dead. We're going to use green. It is 2.99792 meters, oh. which is for between these two points. Uh, that's pretty cool. That number looks familiar. I don't know why yet. You'll see in just a second. So we've, okay. we've actually <laughs> measured the frequency here. We've actually measured the wavelengths of our electromagnetic wave. And this is pretty cool because the wavelength, for instance, this 2.99792 is actually telling us what type of light this is, uh, what type of energy it is. And in oh. this case, we can say, we can look it up on a table and we can say, hey, that is radio. 
as opposed to it being oh, that's a, cool. a microwave or visible light. Or ultraviolet, in, is that one? Uh, ultraviolet, yeah. infrared, gamma ray, x-ray, okay. all of those different types of light. And we can actually look these up and say, hey, well, at nearly three meters, that is radio. And that's pretty cool. And wow. what's okay. also really cool, now that we know that we're talking about 100 megahertz, M H Z, so 100 million times per second that we see this, yeah. right? And it's that long. We can actually take those two figures, okay? Okay. And in our case, we're going to re and remember M H Z for a million times per second. Now, and so what's really cool here is if we actually take these two figures and we multiply them together, what we're going to get is 299,000. 792 kilometers per second. Are so that is that how right? far it's going to go per second? Yes, and what's awesome about that figure is that is in fact the speed of light. That's why it looks so familiar. Or okay. C, we're just gonna call it C, because C equals three times 108, or one to 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now speed of light never changes, correct? I sure hope it doesn't change <laughs> because if it does, we're gonna start having some problems. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean essentially another, another way to put this here is that um, our wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by our frequency. And likewise, ah, okay. our frequency is it's the speed algebra. of length divided, the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Okay. And so as yeah. long as we have one of these figures, we can always figure out the other. That's cool. As long as the speed of light doesn't change, yeah. which is cool. Science. And, <laughs> yes, it's happening now. And this is actually gonna be really useful when we start building our own antennas, because we're gonna need to know what that wavelength is when we right. start making you know, quarter wavelength and such antennas. So, of course, though, we'd actually like to do something useful with this wave. So, let's actually see what kind of other things that we can measure. So, so far we know the frequency, we know the wavelength, but how about the intensity? Intensity? The okay. intensity. How intense how do you is get this that? wave? Uh, well, I mean, it's either in a TP, a wigwam, or a tent. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, that's horrible. The intensity is so actually bad. measured by uh, amplitude, right? Amplitude, okay. Yes, um, and amplitude oh. is essentially the maximum extent of the oscillation. So we've got this oscillation here, mm -hmm. and, and what we're actually looking at, every time it goes up here, you know, down there, and up here, and which is all just a matter of perspective though, um, those are the extents of our oscillation. In fact, you could actually just draw a straight line right through the center of this, and you could measure, you know, we could actually put, say, um, I don't know, we could put a number here. We could put a three and a two and a one and a, uh, or, or a, a one and we'd call this zero and then we could put a negative one and a negative two, I can't write sideways, and a negative three, right? So one way of thinking about this would be like the height of the wave? Yeah, I mean, the, the way that we're, putting it on the table and looking at it. Yeah, right. you could say it's kind of the height. I mean, um, but essentially what we're talking about is the intensity, like the intensity of light. Uh, and so we can actually measure this and it's all relative, uh, but essentially if we look at this, uh, this wave here and say that this is for instance, our carrier wave or a carrier signal, we can turn this waveform into something that will actually carry or convey information if we're able to modify it. Um, so another way to say modify actually would be to say the word modulate. We could oh. modulate the signal or yeah. change it in some way over time that we can actually perceive and, and then we can do cool things like assign values to it and come up with, you know, what it may be perceived as. Right. Right? Okay. Uh, so there's a few common modulation techniques and mind you, we're only going to talk about some basic analog ones here, but we are definitely going to be getting into some fun uh, digital modulation techniques and stuff. Oh, cool. But for instance, in fact, this is what you were listening to earlier on 147 megahertz, was amplitude modulation. Oh, AM. Okay. Yeah, AM. Okay, right? got it. And so, first of all, we can modulate the amplitude of our carrier to convey, for instance, ones and zeros. So, if I were to say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put another uh, line of equilibrium here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and draw another, uh, another wave where we're going to say, and I'm going to cheat 
<laughs> That's going to help me. OK. And so there's our amplitude. Oh, it changes. And then a high one. And then we could keep going with this, right? OK. And so what you'll notice is that uh, this, if this were a, if this were a, you know, a three and a two and a one and a zero and a negative one and a negative two and a negative three, we could actually vary this amplitude in such a way over time that we could, for instance, ass assign different values to it. Mm -hmm. So we could actually say that, you know, when we have like a high amplitude uh, of that wave, we could go ahead and use that to represent, I don't know, a one. And when we've got a low wave, we can go ahead and represent a zero. Oh. And then we can represent that as a zero. Ones and zeros. And represent that as a one, and so on and so forth. And then we could actually use it to convey some information. So this oh, would cool. then become a carrier wave, right? Interesting. Okay. Whereas another way to do it would actually be to modulate the frequency. So likewise, we can leave the amplitude the same over each cycle and rather actually modulate the frequency. So for example, we could have like, you know, a low frequency, um, we could represent one thing and a high mm -hmm. frequency could represent another, but leave the amplitude the same throughout it all. So again, I'll just draw another one here. All right. And for this one, I'm going to cheat a different way. I'm going to, I'm just going to put a couple of dots across here to help me. Okay, and so for this one, red, we're going to go ahead and say. They're so big. Oh. Oh, I see what you did there. Right, and so our amplitude actually hasn't changed. It's always the same amount of power, right? And so on this scale here, where we've got our zero and our three and our you know, negative three. This is always the same. However, over time, what we can see is this right here is a longer frequency. This goes, so again, if we're measuring this based on seconds, right? This is in how many seconds versus you know, this and how many seconds. And so yeah. we say, take that same measurement of units, right? We can actually say, well, this one thing happened per, I don't know, sequence. Maybe this is a millisecond, right? And then, you know, one, but hey, one, two, three, right? We could actually say that, for instance, whenever we see this, this is equal to a zero, whereas this is always equal to a one. You know, you can come up with whatever the various techniques are, but essentially what we're doing is we're just changing these things. Another way to look at it is to say that amplitude modulation up here um, is where the frequency is always the same, right? It always happens the same amount of times per second, these cycles, but we just change the intensity or the amplitude. That's what changes. And, uh, you know, the same thing about where in frequency modulation, it would be the amplitude's always the same, but it's actually the frequency that changes over time. And this is all pretty cool because we can start assigning, you know, these are actually digital values and then this will actually lead into, you know, digital radio and all of that other fun stuff. But I just so kind of... can I potentially change, like, can I edit wavelengths myself? Yeah. Is that a thing I could do? Yeah, sure. When we start transmitting and fun stuff like that, we can choose That's any... That's awesome. You know, well, well with, within reason. We're not, we're not talking about the practicality stuff here. We're just talking about the theory, but yes. Absolutely. Ooh. And what's cool about this is you can choose any wavelength you want as, as long as this figure right here doesn't change, as right. long as, as C is always the same, we can then figure out your C frequency. C is the constant. Well, huh. Maybe that's why it's C. I'm not really sure. That's I'm, cool. I am not a math. <laughs> so However, that's the big I'm difference between AM amplitude modulation and FM frequency modulation. Right. And I mean, you can see it plain as day right there. I mean, this right here is just a boring, you know, uh, wave. This is just yeah. electromagnetic radiation. But the difference here is, is we can actually modify that wave. And, and here's two distinct different ways That's we can cool. modify it to convey something. Well, now I want to 
look at AM and FM modulations on my well, you, you SDR <laughs> Sharp and yeah. try to see the differences. Yeah, I mean, we, we cool. were actually just listening to some people in uh, like Hayward or something yeah. talking about what they're gonna, the, like, the, what the weather's going on. The weather, on, the weather this weekend. And, <laughs> yeah, and what their, the antenna in their backyard and yeah. other cool stuff. There's just so much fun stuff going around in the airwaves. But um, I hope that kind of illustrates some of this stuff. And this is going to uh, help us when next week uh, we've got an antenna on order. I know we didn't make our first antenna. We are going to soon. And um, we're going to take a antenna that is specifically designed for a certain wavelength. Ooh. And then that is going to allow us to uh, most bestly <laughs> um, pick up certain frequencies <laughs> that we will then take the module, uh, you know, demodulate them yeah. and figure out the ones and zeros that they mean and actually turn that into something practical that will allow us to spy on our neighbors, <gasps> which is going to oh, be yay. fun. <laughs> so uh, look forward to getting that uh, antenna in the mail and uh, driving feel around bad town. For our neighbors. Well, I mean, they're, they're, if they didn't want <laughs> that information to be spread out everywhere, maybe they shouldn't be transmitting it, or maybe their utility shouldn't be. But that's <laughs> neither here nor there. Uh, stay tuned for next week with that. Feedback at hack5.org, the best place to uh, let us know what you think about this, as well as the comments at the bottom. And uh, don't forget the forums, forums.hack5.org, lots of cool stuff happening in the SDR subforum. Um, let's take a quick break, yep. and when we get back, more shenanigans. It doesn't matter whether you're a wavelength divided by the speed of light or a frequency divided by the speed of light, when that killer idea hits, you need to snag yourself a domain name and web hosting fast, like the speed of light fast. And with Domain.com's quick discovery system and their easy checkout process, you can have your website up and running in no time. In like the speed of light, but not quite, but very similar, in fact, indeed. I love Domain.com. I think I've told you this before. Have I told you? Have I told you how reliable, how affordable, how easy to use they are? It's the reason why Shannon and I love them. And the guys over at Domain.com, they love us. They love us on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com and be like, yo, you guys are the best. Thanks for loving Hack5 and loving us in, in regards to the coupon code that I'm about to tell you about. Would you like to know about the coupon code? It's Hack5. I know. I know you were probably expecting something else, but it's H-A-K-5. It's so cool though, because you use that coupon code, guess what you get? 15% off. That's right. They're already affordable domain names and web hosting are even better when you use H-A-K-5 at checkout to get yourself an extra 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com. We're back and now it's time for the trivia question of the week. So last week's trivia question involves video games. The glyphs in what video game are directly translatable to English? And the answer was The Legend of Zelda. And I totally looked this up and I figured it out. And the games have different kind of hieroglyphs in them, but they all are translatable to English. It's kind of cool to check out. Very, very fun. Now, this week's trivia question is, who was the first woman in space? You can answer that question over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. Hey, Darren. Mm. Hey, Darren. Mm. Hey, Darren. Hey, that's so many times per second. Uh, a million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, speaking of SDR and yes. things of that manner, we have a Technolist photo of the week this week. And this right. one is from James, a.k.a. Smittix. He sent this one in and he said, I really loved your episode on RTL SDR. It made me go out and get mine out of storage. As I was scanning, I found a local taxi firm's broadcast. What I did notice was data bursts either to either side of it. After some research, I found a taxi data signal decoder and decoded the, dames, the data stream using taxi MDT. The data seen in the screenshot is coming from their base. So it's next jobs, it's other little bits of information, where they're going and when they get back. See, this Very is, interesting. This is the same kind of stuff that like, for instance, if someone were to actually set up a couple of nodes to actually record this stuff, demodulate it and publish it. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about something that is in the clear. People would be like, our privacy is being <laughs> Violated. People know when our and yet cab came to what house and stuff. And yet, company is doing it already. But then, that, with that's the thing. Though I'm saying though is, it's all just in the clear anyway. Yeah. So it's like, come oh, on. So funny. Know. Yes. But yes, thank you again, James, for sending that in. That's a great Neat picture. Stuff. I love it. It's thank so you. funny. Feedback. And yeah, of course, you can send those to feedback at hack5.org if you have photos to share as I well. I know the email address. You don't have to tell me. You need to know. I. But I already know. <laughs> I already know. 
So what else yeah. do we have going on? We have the hack shop. We have the hack shop. We are planning some Sunday brunches in the Bay Area. So Ooh. if you are a Bay Area bruncher or just a hacker that likes to eat brunch, um, stay tuned. Next week we should have all the details lined up that for. We're going to give some fun. seminars. We're going to do some workshops. We're going to have some rotating panel of yeah. guestesses. We're so gonna is have that going to be like a, a mid midday thing, like around noon? Yeah, or it's one of those like yeah. Sunday. Like I think brunch technically starts at noon. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whenever you roll. I'll out have of to bed, like get up early, do my extreme couponing because that's always on Sundays. That's when the coupons <laughs> come out. <laughs> and then coupon. <laughs> <laughs> I save so much money. I'm serious. I posted a picture on my Facebook. It's crazy. I'm happy for you. <laughs> don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing. You, you won't be laughing when the zombie apocalypse comes around and mm -hmm. I have super nice smelling hair. This is true. You, you can <laughs> and toilet pile, paper. You can stockpile <laughs> all of the toilet paper and hair product you need. And I will be at my bunker outside of Portland uh, just off the A1. Oh, nice. Good Don't to know. Neither of those make sense. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and of course, if you want to support us, you can go over to hakshop.com. That's where you can find all of our yes. fun goodies like the Wi Fi pineapple, the USB rubber ducky, Ooh. and Ooh. these radios. SDRs. Yay. Mine has a pigtail. Ooh, that's cute. Oink, oink. Aw. Yeah. Mine does not have a pigtail, but yeah. it, it still works. Yay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, with all of that, I am Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. We're reminding you to trust your technolust. I'm going to go play video games. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name And my name is Shannon Morse. <laughs> I'm going to play some games. Pew, pew, pew. My dongle goes either way. Okay. Boom. Now it's a left angle. Wait, it takes forever to get ready. And then I have to wait on him. Hey. To put on his shiny shoes. I will pull this podcast over. Are we there yet? No, we never will be. Yep. It's an occupational hazard. <laughs> so if you'd like to apply for the position of co-host of Hack 5, all you need to do is send in a video of yourself going pew, pew, pew.